Yo, what's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Kurt A. Rowe. I'm coming to you straight out of the garage here. I'm in the Chevrolet C10, and I'm out here doing my install for my own quadraphonic model number quad four, four channel, 45 by watt power amplifier. All right, retro sound, modern sound for your classic ride. <clears throat> but anyway, I'm just here to let you guys know about issues you might run into such as your sound clipping, your audio clipping, meaning when your audio is playing at a higher volume, you may hear the speakers cut out for a brief second and then they resume play as normal. Now, the way that you address this problem, first of all, it means that you have the impedance, um, too low of an impedance for each channel, for the channel, so like for the front or the rear, whatever the case may be. So like right now I had that, I had that issue with the front so, I'm gonna let you hear how it sound loud with the front real quick. Actually, that's the rear. All right, so the rear is hooked up at a incorrect impedance. So you're gonna hear it cutting out. This is probably what you're experiencing. Okay. That's what the audio sounds like cutting out. I was having the same issue with the front speakers. Keep in mind that these speakers, they're at four, they're rated at four ohms per speaker. I got four four ohm, four ohm speakers and I had them all, I had these two wired together and those two wired together over there. <coughs> Excuse me, the problem you run into when you run those two speakers together is it goes from a four ohm impedance down to a two ohm impedance, more like 2.5 but closer to a two ohm impedance when you run those two together um pretty much a two ohm impedance it just went exactly that when i measured it but after i disconnected these center speakers from this channel the amplifier is pushing these two four ohm speakers with no issue at all so pretty much to address the issue you just get your own, own ohm meter and you set it to the ohm selector and you just put the the probes on the speaker leads and that'll tell you the impedance for the speaker if you're not sure what the impedance is of your speakers. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, nah. Anyway, um, but yeah, I just want to come to you and let you know that. So I disconnected these two speakers from the outside speakers. And what I'm going to do so that I can continue to have sound from my center speakers is I'm going to wire them to the output audio side of the radio as these are being routed to the output side of the amplifier. So the amplifier won't be experiencing such low levels of impedance and the amplifier can function normally and not allow my audio to clip. And I'll just run these wires straight to the output that they normally were at on the back of the radio, which would be these gray or white wires. So yeah, that's pretty much how I'm going to address that. <coughs> <coughs> And on the rear, these speakers here are dual voice coil. So I got the voice coils hooked up in parallel, which is causing me to experience the same issues I was experiencing on the front. So all you're gonna have to do for the rears, in my case, as long as you're running each speaker individually to the amplifier, you shouldn't have no issues because they should be at four ohms already. And what I'm gonna do is just disconnect that, that voice coil and just leave it disconnected so that I can have a um, series. I can just have my speaker wired in series to the amplifier and I probably I'm not even gonna hook the other voice call up to the to the radio because I don't think it would make much of a difference so there really wouldn't be no point in doing that so yeah that's pretty much all to it though um, just make sure you got four ohms the correct impedance going to the rating of the amplifier and you shouldn't experience any issues so you're pretty much <clears throat> putting too much of a low current load on the um, speakers because the lower the impedance, the more current it's going to take for the amplifier to push that sub or that speaker, whatever the case may be. And if it's not rated for, you're going to run into issues. So that's me coming to you. I hope this helped. But as you can see, I do have the little amplifier hooked up and it's really pushing these speakers real good. I'm pretty surprised. Um, it gets a little warm, but it's, it's doing awesome. So I just got my stuff temporarily mounted just so I could test it out and everything and it's going great. You don't need these outputs unless you just want to run 
solely off of these outputs and that would mean it wouldn't be any output power for an amplifier it's your low level inputs so but I'm not using these and you hear noises if you're holding them with your hand but as soon as you let them go the noise goes away so what I recommend is putting some tape around these things just to shield them a little bit better I'm gonna fold them back away from each other kind of like so and I'm gonna tape them up real good and I'm going to shield them so that it uh keep away as much noise so it can minimize any noise it could experience based on whatever it may be mounted around but hey this is your boy Kurt a row coming straight to you out of the garage letting you know a little something's going on with the truck i hope this video was helpful and i'm about to be out i gotta go pick the kids on daycare which means i'm not about to get nothing else done today so hey peace mm.